Hi, I'm Tom from Armor Crop Reviews, and this is the review of the 2013 Nexus 7. The 2013 Nexus 7 is the successor to the 2012 Nexus 7. Kind of gives itself away, doesn't it? Um, but the philosophy has stayed much the same. Make a great 7-inch tablet for a reasonable price. Google has again partnered with Asus in making the Nexus 7, and why not? The last one was such a huge hit that it disrupted the tablet market and started the rise of the Android market share within the tablet space. The main improvement from last year's version is the new high resolution display and the Snapdragon processor. The 2GB of RAM is of course also a welcome change. Furthermore, the Nexus 7 has gotten a lot thinner and a lot lighter than last year's version. The tablet has some big bezels in the top and bottom of the device, which is useful for when holding the device in landscape mode for resting your thumbs. The side bezels, on the other hand, is almost too small to comfortably rest your thumb while holding it in portrait mode. I've used it for reading ebooks, and I usually shift between hand, one hand right or left or have both hands at the bottom of the device. This is not because of the weight though, as it is very light at 290 grams and it's very thin at 8.7 millimeters. The coating on the back is the same as last year's model, this soft touch plastic, but it's less textured this time around though. The device still feels great in hand and the soft touch really sticks to your hand and it feels like it would never leave your hand. The device also has a white notification LED situated at the opposite side of the 1.2 megapixel front facing camera. I'm not really sure how useful a notification light on a tablet is though as I usually get my notification on the phone anyway. The 7 inch LED backlit IPS LCD delivers a sharp image with good color reproduction. With a resolution of 1200 by 920 the screen has a pixel density of about 323 ppi. The high ppi ensures that you have smooth text and images and make the display an absolute joy to read ebooks on. The display also features great viewing angles. The device is delivered with the Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 Pro quad core processor at 1.5 GHz and with 2 GB of RAM. The display is a 7 inch Full HD IPS. LED backlit display with a resolution of 1200 by 920 pixels. It comes in storage options of 16 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes. It has front facing camera of 1.2 megapixel. The main camera is a 5 megapixel camera and the battery is of 3950 milliamp hour. The operating system on board is the Jelly Bean 4.3 but can be upgraded to whatever version is the newest. One of the biggest reasons to buy a Nexus device is for the software. This is the Google experience, the true and pure Android experience. Without any OEM intervention or carrier interference, the software is received directly from Google. This also means the Nexus devices get the newest Android updates regularly, which is uncertain it will happen with other Android devices. The version delivered with this device is the 4.3, which can be upgraded to whichever version is the newest at the time until the device is no longer supported. The Nexus 7 is powered by the Snapdragon S4 Pro processor, and this is the favorite chip of last year's flagship. So how does the Nexus 7 handle performance-wise when it's using last year's hardware? Luckily the pure Android is on board this device and it handles itself very well when it comes to performance without any extra software, skins or other things put on top of Android, it performs really well. And the device doesn't really need more power than what the S4 Pro can moisture up, but it would of course have been lovely to see an 800 processor inside this device with the amazing battery life that devices with this chip has enjoyed. Even in gaming it doesn't seem that this device needs any more power. I've loaded it up with a couple of games, Iron Man 3, Hungry Sharks, FIFA 14, Dead Trigger and Dead Trigger 2, Real Racing 3 and I have not experienced any problems with any of them. The only thing I have noticed is the pre-race montage in Real Racing 3 have caused some stutter and lag on this device. But there is none to find when in the race. I have noticed a problem with the keyboard, but it could also be a touch input problem, sometimes the keys got stuck and the device thinks I'm holding the key down. 
This seems to be able to happen with every key, including the backspace, which is more than mildly annoying. The Android operating system doesn't have a control set equivalent, therefore lost is lost, and I have had to rewrite some paragraphs on my LG G2 coverage. I don't know if it's a problem that can be solved with a third party keyboard as I've yet to test it out with a third party keyboard. The speakers of the Nexus 7 deliver a decent performance but lacking some depth. It can easily be used when there's nothing better though. The speakers is located on the bottom back of the device. The device is not completely flat on the back though as it is curved at the edges. It is on this curvature that the speaker is placed. This means the sound is not muffled by a table or other surfaces if the table is lying with screen up. Actually, the device sounds a bit better when placed on a flat surface. The speakers are most useful for watching TV shows or movies where the dialogue is the main part, but when explosion effects and other scenes that need space and depth is part of the show or movie, the speakers will probably not suffice. The same goes with music, as the lack of depth is a problem with most music. The device can, however, still be used if nothing better is available in the same way laptop speakers can be used. To test the battery, I looped the Full HD video with brightness at 50% and sound at max. Wi-Fi is turned on but not connected, Bluetooth, GPS and NFC all off. This is a really taxing scenario on the device and still the device handle a decent 4 hours and 5 minutes. Compared with the amazing battery life of the LG G2, that got 4 hours and 40 minutes, it seems this tablet holds its own in the battery part. In real world uses, I usually charge this device every third day when using it on my commute every day. I have experienced my Nexus 7 doing 3 days, 8 hours and 42 minutes on battery with 6 hours and 11 minutes screen on time and about 10% left of the battery. The usage is typically browsing, reading ebooks and a bit of music. The camera on the Nexus 7 is mediocre at best. The 5 megapixel main camera on the back would in my opinion be better used than the front 4 HD video conference. I have never understood the inclusion of back cameras on tablets. The only user scenarios that I can think of is when doing video conference and you want to show the person on the other end of the call something like a, I don't know, a child or, or a whiteboard. Then this can usually be done by using the back camera. In all other scenarios, I would just rather use my phone. The exclusion of a camera light also indicates that this is not a device to be taken serious for taking photos. I would rather be without a back camera if it meant the device could be cheaper, as it did with the first. The Nexus 7 is a very good device and the 7 inch form factor makes it perfect for consumption of media while still leaving the device mobile enough to take with you. The display on the Nexus 7 is a great improvement over last year's model. This time around it has the color reproduction that the first one should have had and the brightness is spot on. The bump in resolution is also a welcome improvement and really makes the screen a joy to use. Performance wise the tablet is not top of the line. The inclusion of last year's favorite sock does shorten the expected life of the device compared to having a new sock. But this also has to be seen in relation to the price tag of this device. The 16GB goes for £189 and the 32 for £239 on Amazon. Both cases are Wi-Fi only model. But even though the device uses a sock from last year's, I have been able to run every game I have thrown at it. And everyday use is smooth and quick. I have yet to experience any lag on the Nexus 7 in daily use. All in all, it's a great tablet for great price and my final verdict lands on a 9 out of 10. Thank you for watching my video review of the Nexus 7. If you have any questions about this device, feel free to leave a comment right down there below that like button. Also check out my other videos on my channel and subscribe to ensure you get new videos in the future. Well this has been all for me and thank you again for watching my video. Have a great day.